Hi, in this video we will have a look at how to retrieve large data sets from Microsoft Dataverse. So here I got an entity called contacts and I got more than 5000 plus records. So how to retrieve all the records. So for this what, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to adding a manual trigger flow for the demo. The next thing I'm going to initialize is a variable here. So initialize a variable. Okay, and here I'm going to use the variable name as current page as an integer. Default I'm going to put page one actually. Okay. So think about we got we got 10,000 records and I want to retrieve 5,000 and 5,000. So consider the 5,000 as page one and next is the page two then. So 5,000 plus 5,000 that is 10,000. Okay. So how to get all the records? So the plan is I'm going to add, a, add an action step and here I'm going to use do until. Okay, that's in the control do until here it is so and inside the do until so for that i want to add a condition first so the plan is we want to trade when there are no more records so i'm going to initialize the current uh, the current uh, page variable here i'm going to say here the dynamic variable current page is equal to zero that is there are no more records okay we need to set this to zero inside the do until loop. The next thing what we need to do here is I'm going to add a action step. Add action. And that is the dataverse records, which is list rows. Okay. List rows. That's what we want. Then here, select your table. Here for the demo, I'm using the contact table. Oh, the connection is broken, it's saying here. Let me have a look. All right, okay. That's done. The, okay, here we go. I can see now contact, contacts. That's basically it is. So here, um, not going to turn on the pagination or anything here. You can turn on the pagination also here. Turn on the pagination and put the threshold. The maximum is 5,000. The threshold is, you can put 5,000 here. So I'm not going to turn on that. I'm going to show this in a different way actually, okay? Then here, in under the list rows, as you can see, there is a parameter called fetch XML query here. I'm going to use that. Okay, so for that, what we want to do here is we want to generate a fetch XML here for this. So to generate that, the easiest thing you can do is you can go to the advanced settings. Okay, just ignore the settings one. There are two different ways. This is the old way. I forgot that. So you could use the new look. Under the new look, if you enable the new look, you should be able to see here. Oh. Under the... Under the edit filters. Here it is. See that? Edit filters. Then here, uh, you know, you can say show live data, change written data. And so if I add a row, Select a field you want to say. So I'm going to say here full name. There we go, full name. Uh, then click on the you know fetch XML. Just so what are the fields you want? Just add that as the you know field you want. And then that's a filter also here. Yeah. So you can add the filters. I can't see adding the columns here. Let's see what we can generate here. So I download the fetch XML here. One normal condition to have validation errors. Okay, you need to put something here. Okay, let's put test here. Then download fetch XML here. Here it is. Keep that. Open that fetch XML. 
So here it is. That's what I got. See that? So here I got the fetch XML here. Okay, so I just intended the document here. Okay, so so you can see it's added a couple of fields. So you can extend the fields like you know adding your own attributes, which are whichever the attributes you want you want. So I'm going to stick on with only the full name and email address here. That's all I need here. And okay, and the ID also, contact ID as well. And to order by full name descending, or if you want to order by, you can add that also there. I don't have a filter, so I'm going to remove because we want to get everything here. Okay, so that's that. Then I'm going to remove all this here. Remember, we don't want all this in here. Okay, then here what we want is I'm going to add count equals put 5000 there. So take the first 5000 or you can put whatever you want. You can put first 2500 here. Okay, I'm going to show you that. So put count 2500 page equals put two double quotes. Okay, so we'll come back to that. I'll copy this. So that's the fetch XML it's generated. Now going back to here, cancel that. Uh, under the fetch XML, paste that here. So remember the page, the page we want, we initialize the variable, remember the current page. So go to the dynamic mapping and current page. So first it will be one then. Okay. So the technique we need to use now is we need to use an if condition afterwards to see whether have we got any records or have we got more records, something like that. So put the if condition. Uh, that's control is it here. Yeah. Select control condition. Yep. So here what we want is we want to add an expression here. So the expression is going to be length of the dynamic content of the body slash values. That's that's the one we want. Okay. Body slash value. So that means if the list rows contain any values, that's what I'm looking here. Okay, click add. Right, e is greater than zero. So let's check e is greater than zero. That means we got some values here. So that means we need to do some more work here. That means under the true condition, add an action step and we want to increment. So remember, remember the scenario I said, page one, page two scenario. That's exactly this is. So inside, uh, okay, add that, the increment variable. Then here under the current page, I'm going to say increment by one. That means first execute with the first page with 2500 records. That's what I said here, 2500. Then increment that current page. If I got more than one, again, get me the next set of 2500. Yeah, it may have 2500 or it may not have nothing at all. It depends. So if there are nothing there, what we want is we want to stop the loop because we are under the do until loop here. So what we want to do here is I'm going to say set variable. Under the set variable, set the current page to zero then. That's the technique we need to do. So if you got more records, use the increment. If you got no more records, then set it to zero then. That means, you know, our do until condition here, that current page is equal to zero, it will exit. Okay, so after the increment variable, I'm just going to add a compose. I just want to show you something here. Add a compose. And use that same expression so that I know how many records I'm getting it. Here it is. Okay, so save the flow now and I'm going to run now. Click test, add manually and run it now. Okay, it's running now. Right, flow ran successfully. We got four iterations here. Let's see then. That's the first iteration. Okay, that's the first one. And uh, set variable false. That's not right. Uh, let me, I think it's a refresh issue here. That's all it is. Yeah. See, I, I think it's a refresh issue. So click on this next and then click on previous. It will refresh it here. Yeah. So first increment variable one. Then it's incremented to two. Then see that? That was one. Now it's two. 
So what's the first number of records we got? See that? 2,500 records we got. Because that's what we said under the list rows. We said I need 2,500 records. Yeah. And that's the fetch summary is ex executed. And then, you know, you can get the output, download, see alt. Uh, so if you click on the, see, you can see that that's 2,500 records. And uh, here, you know, I asked for the full name and the contact ID and the email also there. But if the email is not there, it won't be present in, present in the record. That's what happened there. Okay. Now, click on the next. Here it is another one. So in the next one, see that's my current page two, and it is increment to the third page. That is next one. So if you got more than that, so let me see the comp compose again. That's two thousand five hundred. So that's two thousand five hundred plus two thousand five hundred. That's five thousand now. Yeah. Now click on next. That is the third one. Again, see that it's going to the fourth. So that means in the third page we got more records also. Go to the compose. Have a look. We got thousand three records. That means we got. 2500 plus 2500 plus 1003 that is 6003 records overall we got in the database so here what you are seeing here is i have got 6003 record here yeah so that's the way we can get you know all the records so the key here is let me show that in the classic designer it's easy to visualize those from the classic uh, designer then okay so first the page is initialized to one then if there are no more records we are saying have i got any more records then if there is no more records we are resetting the value to zero that means this loop it will exit it yeah then under the list rows we put a fetch xml like i shown you how to execute how to get the fetch using the new look then you can go to the filters and get that or you can go to the advanced to find using the old way also yeah there are different ways you can generate that then here i use the page current page uh, here yeah so i use the current page uh, that is here i map the current page then i set the variable here give me 2500 records each so first batch will be 2500 with page one the next one will be page two with 2500 and you know it goes on until when it's having no more records when it's having no more records we are resetting the value to zero then yeah uh, here setting the value to zero hence the do on the loop will exit will exit also this won't execute anymore then yeah then again you know we said we want i want the attributes so i set the attributes here so if the values are there it will be present in the metadata um, in the rows otherwise it won't be there yeah so that's a way, you know, we can get all the records from the database. Uh, so this is a, one of the, you know, easiest way to get that. Or there is another way also you can get using the raw count and the skip token and all. You know, there are different ways you can get it. This is a common way I use it uh, generally to get all the records. Okay, so there is one more thing here to understand here about the do until loop. Okay. So we I found a good article about it. So that means you know if it's if you got uh, you know thirty thousand or forty thousand records, then it might take a long time to execute it. So for you what you need to do is you need to click on the edit advanced more here. Um, sorry, not that. Uh, go to the change limits here. Yeah, and see that here PT one H this timeout you need to increment it. There's a good article explaining about this also here. See that here, let us change timeout to two minutes. We keep that count as five then. Yeah, so it's, see that? So that's why you can increment the, the timing uh, using the do until loop. What I will do is, I will refer this excellent article, uh, you know, uh, by Nishant. Um, so um, I will refer that in my video description also, so that you can have a good read about how to increment that. So by default, here it says the value for the count is 60. The timeout is PT1H okay so that's what that means it gets to one hour it will either run 60 times or will run for one hour which occurs first so have a good read about this also to try to understand you know about the do and the loop uh, the timings time settings yeah hope this is useful thank you for watching